Welcome back to the Snowpoint cast. Today we're going to be talking about a deck from 2010 called Sableock. Sableock got first place at US Nationals as well as a top 16 finish at the World Championship. The same guy actually got uh, both finishes. His name's Con Lee. Uh, but let's get right into it. So starting off with four Sableye. Sableye's got 60 HP, a single retreat, and a resistance to colorless, and an awesome Pokebody. So the Pokebody's called Overeager. Uh, if you start a Sableye, you just ignore the result of the coin flip and you go first. So awesome going first, especially because of your first attack. So your first attack is Impersonate. So for zero energy for free, uh, you're gonna search your deck for a supporter card, discard it, and then use that supporter card as the effect of this attack. So uh, that's good for a couple reasons. I mean, it keeps your power sprays consistent because um, this is a lock deck. You do want to lock down your opponent's abilities and their hands. So uh, being able to impersonate, grab a collector, grab three basic SP Pokemon, uh, and then next turn when you could just bench them and then your power sprays are live, uh, which is great. Another great part about impersonate is you, you go first, you get to impersonate for a collector, get those three. Your opponent gets like one turn with powers and then they're almost guaranteed to not have powers the next turn because or unless they disturb your hand because um, you just bench your SP Pokemon and then you can impersonate for a Cyrus as well and then you just search out that uh, power spray so really really powerful first attack and it's great at helping you set up Overconfident is the second attack on Sableye, so also a definitely really good attack. So uh, Overconfident for one dark does 10, and then if the defending Pokemon has fewer remaining HP than Sableye, this attack's base damage is 40 instead. So you play a bunch of special dark as well. Uh, special dark boosts your dark Pokemon's damage by 10. Uh, so if it's attached to that Pokemon anyway, so you attach a special dark and then you're overconfident for 50. And there is a lot of Pokemon in this format that have 50 HP. Um, so being able to potentially knock out a Pokemon on the first turn of the game is a very very strong asset to this card. Okay, so we also play two Garchomp C. So Garchomp C's got 80 HP, a single retreat, and a weakness to Colorless or Dragon, and then Claw Swipe for a DCE, you do 30, and then Earthquake for three Colorless, you do 50, and then you do 10 damage to each your own bench Pokemon. Uh, or you can get that for a double Colorless energy and an energy gain as well. It's definitely really good to know that uh, for the Garchomp Mirror because you do take Garchomps out with Garchomps a lot of the time. Uh, but you do play that to play Garchomp C level X. So really powerful card, 110 HP, free retreat, and a weakness to Colorless or dragon healing breath is its power so when you evolve garchomp c or, or not evolve level x rather um you get to heal all the damage counters off your pokemon sp so you don't play a ton of pokemon sp in this deck you do play some uh, but not as many compared to like other major builds uh there is a tech that we're going to talk about that does make healing breath a little bit more useful if you do choose to play that tech um, but honestly a lot of the time healing breath is only going to be healing your garchomps because you don't put a lot of other sp pokemon in the active a lot of the time but there are situations where healing breath is can be really clutch you just don't play a ton of level x pokemon so you don't have that massive hp so they're not living a, a, a super long time uh, but dragon rush is the attack on garchomp so dragon rush for three colors you discard two energy uh from garchomp c and then you choose one of your opponent's pokemon bench pokemon and then you do 80 to it so really powerful snipe i mean killing a clay is great killing your opponent's uh setup pokemon and if they have a stage one that's at like 70 or 80 hp you just get to kill it uh, it just helps you be really aggressive honestly garchomp's in here one of the biggest reasons garchomp's in here is to take out your opponent's consistency like if they have a an uxi level x or a clay doll that's drawing them cards this deck wants to lock down your opponent's hand eventually so being able to kill that support pokemon that's getting letting them see more cards uh is an essential strategy to this deck. So you can play two Uxie as well. Uxie's got 70 HP, a single retreat, and a weakness to Psychic. Uh, the power is called Setup, so when you bench Uxie, you get to draw up until seven, so you have seven cards in your hand, so really, really powerful uh, power. And then Psychic Restore, uh, for one, you do 20, and then you can put Uxie and all cards attached to the bottom of your deck. Psychic Restore can definitely be really good, I mean, versus Gengar um, from Stormfront, that gets... A uh out of fainting spell so you do the damage and then you get the effect of the attack you put the uxy underneath uh, and then the fainting spell activates but there's no active pokemon so it doesn't matter um but yeah so being able to hit for psychic weakness is really good as well and you also play one Uxie level X. So again, being able to hit that Psychic weakness with Zen Blade is very strong. Uh, 90 HP, a single retreat, and a weakness to Psychic. Trade-off is the power, which is an awesome, awesome power. Such a good power. Uh, so once during your turn, before you attack, you can look at the top two cards of your deck, choose one of them, put them in your hand, and then put the other one at the bottom of your deck. So really good consistency. Um, and like I said, having that access to Zen Blade can be very good as well. Being able to hit your opponent uh, for Psychic weakness, depending on the matchup, is very important. 
So you can play one Chatot G as well. Chatot G is a very interesting card. So 60 HP, a single retreat, a weakness to res uh, lightning, and a resistance to fighting. So the power is called Disrupting Spy. Disrupting Spy is a very, very good power in this deck. So uh, once you're in your turn, when you put Chatot G from your hand onto your bench, you can look at the top four cards of your opponent's deck, and then you can rearrange them in any order that you want. So you get to have that control eventually. I mean, we're, we haven't got into it yet, but you do play cards that take cards out of your opponent's hand. So once your opponent is at a dead hand, the next step is to control their top deck and make sure that they're not top decking anything good. And Disrupting Spy does such a good job of that, especially because of Search and Escape. So you can go Disrupting Spy, you know, rearrange the top four, and then you can Search and Escape. So Search and Escape for free, which is awesome. Uh, for free, search your deck for a trainer card, show it to your opponent and put it in your hand. Uh, and then you put Chet's G and all cards attached to it on the top of your deck and you shuffle your deck. So you get to potentially use that Disrupting Spy again. I mean, you know when they're hitting their supporter card, if they have like two out of four, you know they're gonna hit it in two turns. Um, so you, know you have two turns to find a, a, another chat dot. One of the greatest part about chat dot though is you can chain them because you can go chat dot G, search and escape, find a trainer, find an SP radar, put it in my hand, and now I can just chat dot again whenever I would like. So really, really important control aspect about this deck and a very, very strong SP Pokemon. Okay, so you played one uh, Crobat G as well. So Crobat G's got 80 HP, uh, free retreat, resistance to psych or resistance to fighting rather, and a weakness to lightning. So the power is called Flashbite. That's the main reason you play this Pokemon. So Flashbite, when you bench Crobat G, uh, you can choose one of your opponent's Pokemon in play, and you put a damage counter on it. So that has some synergy with Sableye for sure, because um, with the second attack on Sableye, if you hit a Crobat, like say you're versus another Sableye, you can go drop a Crobat special dark now they're at 50 and you kill them so you can do that on your first turn if you have a crobat a special dark and you start sableye definitely a really strong combo and good to know that when you reduce your opponent's hp if you're lower than sableye getting that damage buff can be like really really threatening so you do play a Dragonite FB as well. Uh, Dragonite FB has got 100 HP, uh, three retreat, a resistance to fighting, and a weakness to colorless. So mock blow for three, you do uh, 20 damage, and then if your opponent's active is an SP Pokemon, you do 80 instead. So really good in the SP mirror. You do take out a Garchomp for a DCE and an energy gain with this card. So definitely a really strong card in the mirror. And honestly, uh, we're not going to talk about Giant Tail because if you're using Giant Tail, oh, you're in a really rough spot. Okay, Giant. We'll talk about it for a second. So for four, two DCE is pretty much the only way you're getting this attack, or a DCE, uh, energy gain, and uh, another col colorless, I guess. But 100, and then you flip a coin if Tails' attack does nothing. So, like, really, really bad. Honestly, if you're attaching that much energy, I you probably just started Dragonite and didn't have anything else in your hand. Um, okay, so we also play one uh, Honchkrow G. So Honchkrow G has got 80 HP, a single retreat, a resistance to fighting, and a weakness to lightning. So the first attack on uh, Honchkrow is called Honcho's Command, which is a really strong attack. So for free, you have so many free attacks with this deck, which is great because you can attach retreat and then just get a free attack. Or uh, if you find an unknown Q, you can just Q and then get into that free, uh, free attack as well. So Honcho's Command, uh, search your deck up for to two, any combination of stadium cards or trainer cards that have Team Galactic's invention in their name, show them to your opponent uh, and put it in your hand and they shuffle your deck. So great for early game. You'd say it helps you find those SP radars to get your SP Pokemon out. Um, also lets you find a power spray if you already have enough Pokemon out. Like if you have two other SP Pokemon in play, Honcho's command for a power spray is a really, really threatening thing. You can also get two power spray with Honchkrow. If you think your opponent has like collector for double Uxie, getting double spray on two Uxie is like, Oh man, that is that is a lot to come back from uh, if you collect it for two Uxie. So definitely a really powerful attack. And then target attack actually has some really cool uses as well. So for a Dark and a Colorless, uh, you choose one of your opponent's Pokemon that has, uh, and then you put 20 damage on that Pokemon. If that Pokemon already has any damage counters on it, um, you do 20 damage plus 20. So you do a 40. So really nice with a Crobat. You could do a Crobat drop, and then for a special Dark and an energy gain, you're sniping 40 somewhere. Target attack is also able to hit 50 in the active if you have a Crobat. So you go Crobat drop, uh, special dark energy gain, and then you're hitting for 50. So that does kill stuff um, like... Uh Ghastly. Ghastly as well. Ghastly has 50 HP. So definitely a really powerful card and a... Uh Good addition to this deck for sure. Um, so you play an unknown Q as well. Unknown Q, you play it for quick. Uh, so 30 HP, a free retreat, and a resist or a weakness to psychic. Quick is the power. So once you're in your turn before you attack, if unknown Q is on your bench, you may discard all cards attached to unknown Q and then attach unknown Q as a tool. And then essentially what unknown Q does is it gives you one colorless less retreat. Um, so all your Pokemon with a single retreat now have free retreat. And you're just able to grab that with the collector or a Roseanne. So definitely a really good card. 
Okay, and then you also play one Azelf. Uh, so Azelf's got 70 HP, a single retreat, and a weakness to Psychic. Uh, the power is Time Lock, really stable card in like every deck in this era. Such a good power. Uh, when you bench Azelf, you get to search your prizes, reveal a Pokemon you find there, put it in your hand, and then take another card from your hand and put it back to your prizes. Um, so really good. Honestly, just being able to take Pokemon out of your prizes can be really important depending on the matchup. If you're playing the Mirror, getting a Dragonite out can be really important and Garchomp pieces. If you're playing versus something that's Psychic Week, finding your Uxie pieces is very good as well. It's just really good uh, depending on what matchup you're playing. Being able to get a chat out of the prizes can also be really, really clutch as well. Okay, so we're going to talk about a tech that you can potentially play in this deck now. So you do have a tech option and the tech option is Blaziken FB and Blaziken FB level X. So Blaziken FB, before we get to the level X, it's got 80 HP, a single retreat and a weakness to water. Luring Flame is the first attack. So for one fire, uh, switch the defending Pokemon with one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. And then th that new defending Pokemon is now burned. So honestly, a really, really good attack. It doesn't seem amazing, but it has a lot of really good uses. So Luring Flames, let's say you start a Blaziken and you have a fire energy in, in your hand, okay? So you go Luring Flame, and now I have the ability to not only control what my opponent has in their active, uh, I also get to put a special condition on something. So that's good for a couple of reasons. The first reason it's really good is if your opponent starts a Spear Tomb, you can just chuck a Blaziken active, bring something up that's not the Spear Tomb. Now they have to dedicate energy there to retreat if they want to get the Spear Tomb back in the active, and you open yourself up to not getting uh, Trainer locked as well. So that's one use for it. Another really powerful use for it, and I would say, honestly, one of the best uses for it, is bringing up a Claydol, because Claydol is one of the things that, you know, if you don't have a Garchomp just to kill the Claydol right away, it... It can give your opponent a lot of cards and you really don't want them to see those cards. If your opponent gets set up versus this deck, that's one of the ways that you can get rolled is if your opponent gets a bunch of stuff on board and they have a bunch of cards in their hand and then you're like, well, my, my whole strategy was kind of to take cards out of your hand and now you have cards in your hand. So Claydol is a big threat to this deck. So you can Luring Flame a Claydol, and that's a really effective um, use of Luring Flame because you bring the Claydol active and its power can't be used if it has a special condition on it. So you burn it and it's got two retreats. So unless they have a DCE, they are chilling there, which is awesome because they're potentially taking burn damage as well. Um, so, you know, eventually they might die, but honestly just stalling them out until you can find that Garchomp or, you know, if they flip a Tails in the burn, then you can go... Uh, single crowbat drop and then you can kill it with a sableye there's just a lot of ways that you can kill a claydol once it's been uh burned and on honestly the best part about burning a claydol is you just slow your opponent down so much like it's really important to slow a claydol down because of how fast and strong claydol is as a card uh so vapor kick the second attack so for a fire nicolas does 30 and then if your opponent has any water type pokemon to play this attack does 30 plus 30 so 60 you can potentially get that for one uh, definitely decent if your opponent has a water type in play um but Another reason you play the Blaziken is for the Blaziken FB level X. So Blaziken FB level X has 110 HP, a single retreat, and a weakness to water. Um, so the body on Blaziken FB is called Burning Spirit. Any damage done to burn Pokemon, uh, both yours and your opponents, is increased by 40. So you can burn and then jet shoot and you can hit something for 120, which is like pretty good value for one um but also being able to just have that attack is great because it one shots a dialga g level x dialga g level x is weak to fire um even if they have two special metals on because you do that 80 80 minus 20 is 60 times two and you kill the dialga g level x so this is kind of a dialga counter in this deck dialga does uh definitely put in some work against this deck special metals is, is very good um and being able to one shot a dialga dialga is a pretty common card in this meta so being able to just one shot it for a single fire, um, definitely a, a worthy inclusion depending on the meta that you're playing in with this deck. Okay, so that's Blazing FB. Um, and now we're gonna talk about some of the tech cards that you, if you wanted to play Blazing FB, you would potentially cut for uh, this line, either the 2-1 the line or a 2-2. Two, two. I only have enough cuts for a 2-1 line, which I think is super fine. I think if you're playing a 2-1 Blaziken, it's okay. If you're playing a 1-1 one, one Blaziken, it's honestly really fine too. Or you can play none and just play these techs. It really depends on what meta you're expecting. Um, okay, so Toxicroak G is the first tech. So Toxicroak G, fighting type, 90 HP, two retreat and a weakness to Psychic. So the power is called Leap Away. Once during your turn before you attack, if Toxicroak G is your active Pokemon, you can flip a coin and then if heads, uh, you can return Toxicroak G and all cards attached to your hand which is awesome because you poison revenge 
usually you have like a psychic and then an energy gain. So being able to get that energy gain and the energy back can be really important because energy on Garchomp for late game uh, can be really important. Uh, but yeah, so being able to bring that back is cool. And Poison Revenge is the main attack. Uh, so for a psychic and a colorless, it has 20. And then if you're, any of your Pokemon were knocked out by damage from uh, your opponent's attack during their last turn, this attack does 20 damage plus 40 more damage. And the defending Pokemon is now poisoned. So this is a Luxray counter. If you expect a lot of Luxray, I wouldn't recommend cutting this. And honestly, Luxray is a really good card. So this is one of the potential potential mech cuts. Uh, I do really like this card in this deck. Although the bad part about Toxic Rogue G is it, it forces you to, to play a Psychic Energy. So if you do cut this, you do get a little more consistent in terms of energy uh, in the deck. So the next tech that we're going to talk about is the Honchkrow 1-1. One, one. So uh, starting off with Murkrow, Murkrow's got 50 HP, a single retreat, resistance to fighting, and a weakness to lightning. Uh, Duskstone, if Murkrow, you can just evolve Murkrow to turn that you bench it, so that's really cool. You can just go Murkrow, Honchkrow, kind of a neat, uh, it's an item. The items were such a like cool part about 2010, I really like items. Um, and then Faint Attack, so for a Dark Colors, choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. This attack does 20 damage. Uh, to that Pokemon, this attack's damage isn't affected by weakness or resistance. So that Snipe 20 can be really good, depending on what you're playing against. Sniping 20 against a um, Uxie level X, if your opponent's playing an Uxie, lets you kill the Garchomp. There are some niche uh, uses for Feint Attack if you do start a Murkrow. Uh, but you, the main reason you play is for Honchkrow. So Honchkrow's got 90 HP, a single retreat, same resistance and weakness, uh, and then it's got a really good power. So Darkness Restore, once during your turn, uh, before your attack, if Honchkrow is your active Pokemon, uh, and your opponent's bench isn't full, you can take a basic Pokemon from their discard and put it onto their bench. So that has so much synergy with Garchomp because if your opponent's board is just like two Dialga G level Xs and they're like, kill me, and you're not playing this Blaziken, and you're like, well, I'm probably just gonna lose the game. Even if you have one prize left, you still gotta kill a fat Dialga to take the game. This Honchkrow says you just gotta surpass that. So you can put the Honchkrow up, darkness, darkness Restore like an Uxie or something, and then if you have three energy on the Garchomp or two in an energy gain, you just win the game. Um, so, I mean, really good if you're playing against a, a good opponent who isn't just benching Pokemon. So definitely a really good power there. And Riot is actually a really good attack as well. So for a Dark and a DCE, it does 30 plus 10 damage for each Pokemon that isn't an evolved Pokemon in play, both yours or your opponents. So having that attack, you know, knowing that you have that is good, but the main reason that you play this tech is for Mewtwo level X. So Mewtwo level X is a very powerful Pokemon. Uh, essentially it says can't be touched by any basic Pokemon and that's all that you play. So Riot does a bunch of damage based on your basic Pokemon and, uh, so I didn't mention this but another really good use for riot is in the sp mirror because everyone's running just basic pokemon so if you have a pretty full board and your opponent has a pretty full board you can riot something and potentially just take out like a level x or something with a, a riot so definitely a, a solid attack to know that you have and a, a good mewtwo counter so if you're thinking about these these are the three cuts that i would recommend if i had to choose another cut ugh. Oh, I'm not going to choose another cut. <laughs> I just say cut these three for, for this line, how thick of a line you want. And, you know, again, it really depends what kind of meta you expect. Um, and like I said, the Blaziken, Dialga, well, let's go over one more time, Dialga, Luxray, and Mewtwo Level X. So it really depends on what you expect to face, but all three of these cards um, can be really good in their respective metas. Okay, so getting on to the trainer cards, uh, starting with four Power Spray. So Power Spray... Really solid card. Uh, if your opponent activates a Poke Power during their turn and you have two or three or more SP Pokemon in play, um, you can deactivate that power. So really solid card. Uh, and that's the reason you play four of it is because, like I said, this is a lock deck. So you want to get to the point where you have three SP Pokemon in play, and then you want to be able to lock your opponent's powers every single time. And then eventually you hand deny them to nothing uh, and then chat talk to control their deck. And that's a full lock. If they don't have any cards in their hand or have only crap cards in their hand and you can keep doing the chat talk lock, uh, it's great. And eventually you get down to a point with your deck that you have such a thin deck you can uh, just Uxie level X. You can go, you know, power spray, stop your powers. And then late game, you can go chat dot, arrange your top four, put chat dot back, go Ux draw Uxie. You're seeing top three cards of your deck and you need to find chat dot within probably like three to four turns. So it's really easy to keep that chain going in the late game. But to get there, you have to stop your opponent, opponent from using powers in the early game because that's how they win. Okay, so you also play uh, for Poke Turn. So Poke Turn is awesome. Just picks up one of your Pokemon SP and all cards attached. Uh, so it can be really good to get your Garchomps back to heal again. Um, picking up a damage SP Pokemon is good. Getting multiple Crobat drops can be really good as well. Uh, picking up a Chatot and using a Chatot again can be really good. There's a ton of really good uses for this card. It really depends on what your board looks like. You also play three uh, Energy Gain. 
So if it's attached to one of your Pokemon SP, that Pokemon pays one colorless less to attack. So really good on a Garchomp. Main, the main use for it is going to be on a Garchomp. Um, so you put an energy gun on a Garchomp and then a DCE and then you can snipe 80 anywhere. That's kind of why Garchomp was so good is because energy gain is an amazing card with double colorless energy. So you also play two SP Radar. SP Radar says... Choose a card from your hand, put it on the top of your deck, and then search your deck for a Pokemon SP. Uh, show it to your opponent and put it in your hand. So great for finding your Pokemon SP. Gets your level Xs, your Garchomps. Uh, it doesn't get UC level X, but it finds Garchomp, Garchomp C level X, all your Pokemon SP. Just really good search. And the fact that it's a Team Galactic Convention means you can search it with Cyrus. Uh, so definitely a very, very strong consistency card. And you also play one Pokemon communication. So you do play a lot of Pokemon. So being able to find one of those Pokemon and say, hey, I don't need a Toxicroak in this matchup, or I don't need a Honchkrow in this matchup, or I don't need uh, an Uxie right now. You can put it back, grab something else. Definitely a really solid card as well. And then you play a Versus Seeker as well. Uh, Versus Seeker makes a lot of sense in this deck because Sableye, the very first thing you're going to be doing is discarding a supporter card. Um, so if you discard a supporter and then you have a Versus Seeker in your hand, that supporter is live. But in the late game, being able to go, oh, I've already Sableye'd for a bunch of supporters. I have a lot of supporters in my discard pile. Being able to see all of those and then be like, okay, which one do I really need? And take the one back that you need. It just gives you a lot of options in the late game. And I think it's a, a very solid inclusion in this deck. You also do play one Premier Ball. Uh, so Premier Ball can only search for level Xs, but it searches your uh, discard pile or your deck for a level X, and then you put it in your hand. So really good for getting back your Garchomps uh, and your Uxies, and just finding a Garchomp can be an issue sometimes. So being able to just, if you have that Premier Ball in your hand, you don't have to worry about finding a Garchomp. Uh, and it just, I, I, it's another one of those Pokemon search that keeps your deck consistent. Okay, so getting into the supporter cards. So starting off with four Cyrus Conspiracy. Cyrus Conspiracy is an awesome card in this deck. Uh, so you gotta search your deck for a basic energy card, a supporter, and a um, trainer with Team Galactic's invention in its name. So that gets you any of these. It gets you uh, Power Spray, Poke Turn, Energy Gain, SP Rate, or any of those. Um, but the other great part about Cyrus Conspiracy is if you use it on your first turn um, with Sableye, like if you discard a Cyrus and you don't have anything in your hand, you gotta search your deck for a supporter. So the next turn you have a supporter to play so again it just keeps you really consistent and chaining cyrus together is also really strong because you gotta go cyrus find a cyrus and energy in a tool and then next turn you just get to always find energy and that tool that you need um so definitely a really really strong card in every sp deck you also play two Pokemon Collector. So Pokemon Collector, search your deck for three basic Pokemon and put them in your hand. Uh, like I was saying, really important to find those basic Pokemon so that your power sprays are live. And when you play two, it just means that if you have a Sableye, you get to search for those three and then your opponent might get like one turn with powers, um, but no more than that. So definitely a really strong setup card. You also play two Judge. Uh, so this is a hand uh, denial deck. So being able to put your opponent down to four, a Judge and then a Chatot G uh, can mean the end of the game sometimes because if your opponent doesn't have anything in their hand and you control their deck, if you get to that point where you're just locking them, um, you get to set up a board where it, like you know what their top four cards are all the time. So you can know how many turns they have until they hit something and you open your, yourself up to attacks during that time because you're like, well, I know you don't have anything and I know what your top deck is, so I may as well start taking out Pokemon at this time now that you're locked down. So definitely a really, really powerful card in the handlock aspect. Another powerful card in the handlock aspect, Cyrus's Initiative. So flip two coins, uh, if either of them is heads, look at your opponent's hand, choose one card from them, their hand, uh, and then uh, their, your opponent puts that card back into their deck. So if you flip two heads, you, you got to put two cards back, which is like really insane. Like usually Cyrus is going to grab a supporter, but being able to grab two cards potentially uh, can be really nuts, especially because you can discard this card. So the really disgusting plays, you go judge, put your opponent down to four, and then you put a Sableye up and you Cyrus initiative. And if you flip heads, man, that that's one in four cards. If your opponent doesn't have two good cards out of four, they're not drawing anything. So definitely a, a very, very strong card with Sableye. You do also play a Bebe Search in this deck. So Bebe Search, choose a card, put it on your deck, and then search your deck for a Pokemon and uh, put it in your hand. Great for finding level X Pokemon and honestly just finds any Pokemon in the deck. It's some good Pokemon Search. And um, then you do play Felicity's Drawing as well. So Felicity's Drawing, discard one card from your hand, uh, draw three, discard two cards from your hand, and draw four. So definitely just a good uh, draw card. And it's good to get your... Um, consistency good you play one because with sableye you can search it so sometimes being able to discard cards uh based on matchups being able to discard your bad consistency cards like sometimes you don't need a toxic croak or you don't need haunch crow so being able to chuck them and then uh draw some more cards is definitely solid 
You do play an Aaron's Collection as well. So Aaron's Collection, search your deck or search your discard pile for two and any combination of Pokemon SP and basic energy and put them in your hand. So good SP Pokemon recovery as well as some good uh, basic energy recovery in the late game. That can be very important. Um, but okay, so we're getting into energy now. Uh, so starting off with four DCE. So DCE is broken. Two energy for one. Seems pretty good. Uh, the main reason you play this card is for Garchomp, being able to attach a DCE and an energy gain and then uh, snipe out your opponent's Pokemon is very good. Uh, it also fulfills costs for Honchkrow's attack and Uxie's attack and Dragonite's attack. There's just a ton of reasons that you play in this deck. It's a really, really good card. Um, you also play four Special Darkness. So Special Darkness Energy, like I said, adds 10 uh, to your dark type Pokemon's attacks. So that ups your Honchkrow's attacks, both Honchkrow G and Honchkrow, uh, the evolved Pokemon. And then also is able to let your Sableye swing for uh, a lot of damage with Overconfident. Definitely a very, very good part of this deck. You played two regular darks as well. So this is probably one of the other cuts that I would make. You need to find a cut for fire if you're going to play Blaziken. Um, so like if you're cutting the, the Toxic Rook, definitely cut the Psychic um, as well. But these are the three basic energy slots that you have. I would recommend, depending on how thick your Blaziken line is, um, if you're playing the two one, if you're cutting all three of these cards, I would go uh, one dark and then two fire. But if you're only playing a one one, I would maybe just stick to one fire, maybe two. I don't know. It really depends. Luring Flame is like so good matchup dependent. If you're playing against a stage two deck um, that's playing a bunch of spear tombs, being able to get those spear tombs out of the active can be very, very good. Um, so it really kind of depends on what meta you expect. But two one to two fire, um, depending on how thick your Blaziken line is, uh, is definitely very strong. I think if you're playing a 1-1, playing one is safe. Having those dark energies is actually really good, just so that you can just get damage on the board with Sableye. And the thing about darks too is you can go turn one. If I don't, if I don't want to like support or say I have the perfect hand and I just want to do damage so that I can knock something out, like a spear tomb, let's say. You can go chip it for one, and then next turn, um, because you have more HP than them, if you have a special dark, then you get to chip them for a knockout. Um, so it can be really important to attack during that first phase as well. So definitely play around with the energy a little bit, see what you like. Uh, but yeah, this has been Sableock from 2010. If you have any questions about this deck, feel free to uh, leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to get to them. Uh, but thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.